Okay, here is a basic uh, underwater scene that I did. Uh, not real fancy. It certainly may not be as realistic as others would need it to be, but it's what I did for a simple scene. Now uh, I'm using a uh, water, one of the basic old water planes, and you got to remember that the water is simply a flat plane. It has no depth to it whatsoever. Uh, you can uh, add fog uh, to the water, but uh, certain elements will negate it. You'll notice it's not doing anything right here in this scene. And not exactly sure why. I'm sure somebody can explain it, uh, but there are some reasons for that. So sometimes the underwater frog works fine. Other times it may not work for you. Uh, I've just used one of the domes that comes available for free with iClone there and a uh, landscape that's uh, really, uh, it could be one of the mesh mediums. You want it uh, possibly to be a prop, it doesn't have to be, but for some of the things I'm doing with it, it's better if it's a prop and not a true terrain per se. Uh, turn on the grid, you can see how large the scene is. There's the scene there. These are some old props that I got off the old 3D warehouse. Uh, some of them were pretty bad, had to rework them in iClone, but uh, they work fine for our purposes. But uh, the scene uh, is going to work best either uh, shooting down through the water, as you saw, here we are, and here's shooting through the water, and you can certainly adjust your ripples and the size of the waves and all that to create a water effect. But once you go inside, as we just did with the camera, once you go underneath the water, then it loses its effect and uh, doesn't really work as water per se. So it's really too two different ways of shooting a given scene. You can break it up into two scenes. I just used the same scene. Uh, one staged for looking into the water, hovering over the water, and the other in the water. So let's uh, go in the water and see what we did there. Uh, in fact, what we can do now is we really don't need the water if we're going to go under the water as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to turn it off and uh, go down under the water here. And of course I'm messing up my over the water camera, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Here we are. Uh, as I said, this is uh, a simple terrain, uh, which I've converted into a prop. Actually, I think I made it in a 3D program, so it's just, I've labeled it iClone Terrain. Uh, and I modified it with some textures. And one thing I did uh, in here was to take the blend map, which I used some marble, and uh, I animated it. Uh, so I just selected that, and I came down to my UV settings, and I gave it a value right here at the first of the animation, and then I gave it a value here at the end of the animation so it creates this drifting effect which might be appropriate for underwater, at least it kind of works for me. And if you're real clever, you'll put that on all of your props. I didn't do it on some of the structures, just got a little too time consuming for me, so, uh, but that would really give it a unifying effect. The textures may not move in the right direction, though, if you've got a complicated prop and you're adding a blend map. So you might get into some issues that way, but for generally speaking, it kind of works pretty cool. So uh, let's look at the scene here. Uh, got our swimmer up here. Uh, we've got our terrain. We've got some rocks. And I, I changed the uh, setting on the rocks and gave it that... Uh, animated texture as well so uh, when the animation's running but you see notice that it's kind of moving in some different directions here so not totally super realistic but kind of works 
Okay, so you got these old props, the old uh, constructions. I got off 3D Warehouse. And here's the dome that I used uh, just to give it a, con a, a uniform background. It's just this simple dome. These come with iClone. And I gave it uh, a greenish blue effect that I wanted for my water. And then uh, what I did uh, was come over to uh, visualize and uh, turn my fog and gave it a green color and uh, played with my distance. You'll just have to play with that to see what works for you. Uh, also uh, for my overhead shot I added a light. I'm going to uh, turn that light off now. I added this directional light. Now as we go into water you see uh, the fog and this is not water fog, this is fog uh, from the visual tab right here. This is not the water. I've turned the water off so I couldn't use it anyway. But they basically work the same way. You set a start point depending on how thick you want it to look and you play with this number here. And, uh, and then of course uh, added some uh, bubbles and some plant life. Uh, trees. I used horseweed and knapweed. I don't know if they're, they're not underwater plants, but they look like they could be. So the better you dress that, the, the better. Uh, some of them I have uh, hanging upside down for certain shots. So uh, here's a shot that I used. Uh, medium tracking right here. There it is. And uh, then of course added some old legacy bubbles. Uh, if you have popcorn effects, you might have some better bubbles. I attached some bubbles to my swimmer and uh, then just played with my lighting. Uh, I attached a little bit of a light to my swimmer to give her a little backlight. Uh, right here you can probably see. Let's see here. There it is right there and I added the bubbles and attach that to the face and I got a little so I get a little highlight a little rim light around my swimmer of course it lights up the weed so that's not good you might want to adjust it there uh, adding the bubbles if you had some fish you want to add the fish and uh, for me that kind of works as underwater it's certainly not super realistic the other thing I did was uh, add a uh, an old particle effect called deep water and uh, uh, let's see if you can see them. It's kind of funky. It kind of looks like the effect I was carrying. There's one up there. Uh, just a floating kind of drifting mist. There we are. And once again, I, very subtle. It's probably a little too obvious in spots. But uh, kind of adds some floating reflections as it were. And now if you add uh, some uh, shafts of light. You can create that in popcorn effects or sometimes you can create it with other props and create shafts of light shooting through the water. That might also add to the realism of the shot. Okay as far as lighting goes now uh, overhead we used uh, the uh, just one main directional light to do a light and obviously uh, you can you know, change the direction of it and give it a color and warm it up if you need to uh, to make it look more like sun sunlight um, just depending on the effect you want um, you can do that but uh, underwater now we might have some other requirements so let's go to our underwater camera here and look uh, I used another directional light to give it just a little hint under there, but you'll notice you really prob you pro possibly won't need a lot of light because the uh, fog really does its own lighting when you use uh, the fog. Notice with and without fog makes a huge difference and playing with these numbers will make a big difference as well. Uh, also added some uh, HDR effect underwater to give it some more thickness to the water. Uh, colored the fog like I wanted it. Uh, but you may not need a, a whole lot of lighting. Uh, just depends on the effect you're after. 
Obviously if we use that lighting that we used above the surface, it's not appropriate. We'd have to color it a great deal and change its direction. So I just added another directional light here. Now you might play with some uh, point lights. Let's see. Here's a point light here. And you might just place some point lights in the background judiciously to give it just a little bit of a reference uh, glow here and there. Uh, hide them out of the shot uh, just to give it the effect that you want. But you might you might find you don't need a whole lot of lighting uh, because as I say the fog is going to take care of a lot of the lighting uh, for you on that. So, okay, hope that clarifies some things and uh, maybe gives you a starting point.